time for another ST gaming video and we're gonna take a look at the sequel to Space Harrier, imaginatively named Space Harrier 2, published by Grand Slam Entertainment in 1990. And many people incorrectly believe that this is an arcade conversion, it's actually not. Space Harrier 2 actually originated on the Mega Drive or the Genesis, it was actually one of the launch titles for the system, at least in Japan. But hey, I hear you all shout, why is there a Space Harrier 2 in MAME? And why is the game being mentioned online as an arcade game? Well, there actually was an arcade version of Space Harrier 2 that in fact was the Mega Drive or the Genesis version. Sega Europe introduced a new arcade board in 1988 called the Sega Megatech, which was actually just a Mega Drive or a Genesis. You could actually, I think, insert up to eight different cartridges and then you could pay I think to get new lives, so for each credit you inserted you would get another life in the game. And the Megatech was quickly followed up by the Sega Mega Play, which was basically the same as the Megatech, but it had added Yama compatibility and also only had four cartridge slots, I think. So the SD version is actually based on the Mega Drive version, which also is the arcade version. And I don't think I've played this one before, as far as I can remember anyway, so let's dive into it. And we have a pretty interesting and somewhat wonky title screen here, or loading screen. <laughs> Just check out that dude to the right buttocks. I mean, what the hell happened? <laughs> Did someone kick him really hard in the crotch and his ass kind of just imploded on itself? <laughs> Or maybe he's not doing his training the right way. <laughs> I don't know. And before we get stuck in with the game, I just want to say welcome to my two most recent patrons, Hans Johansson and Josh Howard. Thanks guys for supporting my channel, I really appreciate it. And of course also a huge thank you to the rest of my patrons. I really appreciate you guys sharing your hard-earned dough with me. Thanks. <laughs> Alright, let's start up the game. Alert, Fantasyland falls into crisis now. What a weird thing to write. <laughs> yeah, let's just press fire and go. Or maybe not, maybe they're loading. Oh, here we are. This is actually the stage select screen. If I just move the mouse pointer here, I can go to different stages. Awesome stuff. And the first one is Stuna area, I believe. And I've actually already uh, made an attempt at recording this. And I did the mistake of, uh, you know, doing the recording when I was just about to get sick. I was feeling pretty miserable, had a cold incoming, and I felt like crap. And I still decided to record, and that was a mistake. <laughs> because it turned out like poo, so I'm redoing it, alright? <laughs> so let's just go to Stuna area and enjoy the loading times a bit. So here we are. We control the uh, the dude with the uh, very tiny ass with the mouse. Uh, and honestly, it looks like his ass is slightly larger here. And apparently I just got trounced by something. Not entirely sure what, but <laughs> this is, I would say, definitely harder than Space Harrier 1. And I can't just hold the mouse button either, because I need to keep pressing that sweet, sweet mouse button to fire these things of doom and uh, I gotta say the game is running smoother than the first one the Space Harrier 1 it's there's not a lot of slowdown there's uh, it happens but it's not a huge amount of it and it's kind of bearable for the most time I'd say uh, the graphics looks pretty nice and as I think I have mentioned uh, they are lifted straight from the Mega Drive game. My main concern with the game though is that it's so bloody hard to see where I'm at, what the distance is to the enemy that is in front of me. I get killed so often when I think I'm perfectly safe. Now that was just me being stupid, but yeah, it's um, it's definitely more tricky than Space Harrier 1. And the hit detection also does get a little bit wonky at times when I played before that failed attempt I uh... and another thing all these projectiles gets hidden by all these trees and yeah and then you just die feels a little bit shit <laughs> at times but at least I got the dragon dude here so that's nice let's carry on to oh yeah the uh, the second boss the turtle face and this guy is just puking out fireballs like nobody's business but it's, it's a pretty uh, I was going to say it's pretty easy, but I forgot to move there and just stood there like an idiot, taking it to the face. <laughs> no, 
I'm just gonna give the first stage another attempt and hopefully not screw up as bad this time. But I'll get back to you guys when I've reached the turtle boss. Oh, that went surprisingly well. I'm getting better. Maybe. Oh, maybe not. That was dumb. Oh, I don't think I managed to destroy the, uh, the dragon boss there, but I still get to meet Turtle Face here, so that's good. And let's not screw up this time. Just keep moving about. And fire in his faces. And he should be down and out in no time. Jesus, he's, he's really spewing those fireballs out quickly. Alright. Got you, I think. Yeah. Pretty nice and satisfying explosions there, I think. Falls Yard. Sounds like a very nice place. And this is where things start to get a little bit tricky. Oh shit. Oh, damn. You have to navigate these pillars of doom and avoid getting shot by these annoying projectiles. And I gotta say again, the game is definitely more tricky than the... What? Yeah, again. My big fat ass, and I don't mean my big fat ass, this guy's big fat ass, is really getting in the way. I can't see some of the projectiles sometimes. It's... Really? <laughs> Yeah, this is kind of annoying, I have to admit. You really have to keep moving, but of course you had to do that in the first game as well, kind of. But it's definitely... This one is definitely, I would say, more difficult. And you really have to... Yeah, yeah, that was, that was a dumb move, wasn't it? But it's... Oh, God, I don't know. Where... Why did I do that? I don't know. I'm just going to jump forward a bit here to the stage 2 boss. Yeah, it's, this reminds me of something from Alice in Wonderland, really. Maybe that queen with a big head and short temper, if you know what I mean. This boss isn't too tricky. You just kind of spin the mouse about and hope that you don't get hit by some of these random projectiles and then you can just sit her and fire in her crotch and I'm not sure what the deal is with that face. I'm shooting you, maybe you should consider firing back or just slap me in the face maybe? Nope. She just decides to stand there and take it. I don't know. What was going on there? <laughs> Alright. Yeastland. Yeastland? No, Yeastland I suppose. I did get this far last time when I recorded as well, and here is where things start to get a little bit, and you know, extra annoying, because the enemies don't need to be anywhere near you to murder you, or even these obstacles here will quite happily smack you in the face and kill you, even though it looks like you should be absolutely fine. So yeah, you see these jellyfish; they just keep bouncing back and forth in the most annoying manner. They just it's really impossible to predict where they're going to end up. I mean, look at it. They're just flickering back and forth, and all these bloody obstacles are just pretty much doing the same. And Oh, these guys I haven't seen before. Looks like scuba divers or something. And I got killed by a angry futuristic clam, I think. Oh, boy. And here's some... Oh, what the hell is that? That look... Looked like something from Chuaniki. <laughs> I'm not sure what that is. Oh god, I'm, I'm just randomly waving about it back and forth and hoping that I might be able to avoid the projectiles. And I kind of did all of a sudden, though I died again for some reason. And sometimes it's not entirely clear why you get killed. You just keel over and die. And oh, it's boss time. Oh, Jesus, it's an undead dragon face. Yeah, the game definitely runs a lot faster and smoother than uh, Space Harrier 1, i got to say that, on the SD. And I don't know, I mean, initially I felt like the difficulty was higher in this one, and I suppose it is in some ways, but sometimes it just... There's no problems, you just don't get hit, and other times I get hit all the time. I'm not sure what the hell is going on here. It's a little bit... 
strange. Or maybe I'm just getting better at the game. Shock horror. No, I'm not. <laughs> game over. All right, we didn't get to kill the uh, the dragon face there, but that's fine. Okay, let's select uh, not not hot place because I think that's pretty far away. Let's go to uh, zero police. Yeah, no police. That's good. That that sounds great. All right, we have wonderful obstacles here that we need to navigate around and of course these guys look very familiar I think we've seen them before in Space Harrier 1 they're kind of similar maybe not exactly the same though and this is again super and oh god what are you doing why are you uh, I thought he was gonna leave but he didn't he stayed yeah these obstacles are really a pain in the ass because you, they kind of cover up the entire screen they're even bigger than my ass which makes it very hard to see what's coming up which is usually swift death and I always think I can stand in front of them and kill them but no I can't when they are at their, their front most position they will always kill you if you get anywhere near them and yeah, that's not good either, is it? Game over already. Let's try this again. Let's go to no police zone again. Let's see if we can kill these guys before they get anywhere near me because that always spells the end of me. I think that's probably the best tactics you could go for. Just kill the enemies before they get anywhere close to your position. That... really? I'm not sure why I moved that far to the left, but I did. Die, guys. Please just die. Oh. Oh, damn. They take up such a huge area of the screen. There's nowhere to go. <laughs> but yeah, I gotta hand it to them. The sprites are pretty damn ginormous. And they move about... And again, I think I can stand in front of them. I can't. I can never do that yet. I try all the time. Yeah, the sprites are ginormous, I must say. Really quite impressive that they managed to make this move about on the poor SD. Uh, and then they jump back and forth and you think you can get in front of them and kill them, but you can't. Unless, of course, you're better than I am, which I'm pretty sure you are, so... Uh, and more obstacles. I don't like these things. Go away. Stop covering my view. Uh, re and there it looks like he's nowhere near me, but that thing just kills me outright. <laughs> Let's go to Copper Hill. I'm sure that's going to be a great place to relax and, you know, just beat without any problems. All right, welcome to Copper Hill. Oh, more obstacles. That's great. Oh, Jesus. These guys, don't, they look like those fleshy skull things from the first game, don't they? And of course we have a maze we need to navigate here while we are avoiding horrific projectiles. This is getting pretty tricky. Um, I'm not sure if I can stand on the top of the screen to kind of avoid this, but I don't think so. Oh man, ah, not a huge fan of this uh, maze thingies. Really just more annoying than anything else, I think. Oh god, there's so much lag. Get ready. Uh, when you move the the mouse pointer, or the mouse quickly I should say, he just kind of lags and it's very hard to land where you want to land there. Oh man, it's getting to be pretty tight squeeze here. And here's these guys again, please, please just leave. Oh god, I'm not equipped to do this. <laughs> but we are going to try an even more difficult stage, I think. Let's go to Falpiram. That's an interesting name. And there's not much variation to the stages. I mean, they all look pretty much the same as they did in Space Area 1. It's kind of the same gameplay, nothing really new. We don't even get to ride the, the friendly dragon, which was kind of a little bit of a variation in the first game, not that it was that 
much, but it was kind of cool. He would just do the same thing over and over again, although of course the graphics do change and they do look nice. And they are, I believe, lifted from the direct, directly from the ROM of the uh, Mega Drive version or Genesis version. I can see myself growing pretty tired of this pretty quickly because, yeah, it is quite repetitive. Although they are trying to uh, add some var variation here by changing up the enemies and having more or less their obstacles. But I just kind of grow pretty tired of it pretty quickly. It's not... I mean, the first one was kind of cool because it was impressive uh, to have Space Harrier on your home computer. That was such a cool thing to have. The second one just feels like, yeah, all right. But, uh, no, I don't think I would have played this one very much back in the day if I'd got to play it. Oh, and then I get stuck here and, yeah, it's so hard to judge where I am at in relation to all these horrific obstacles. And I, I can't see anything here. It's just huge pillars of doom that move in a pretty annoying fashion. <laughs> am I being a bit negative, you think? Maybe I am. But to be honest, uh, yeah, not really my cup of tea here. And we get a lot of reused enemy sprites here as well, which does nothing to maintain my interest. And as I said, I've already tried to record this, so I have played it a fair amount. I think it's boss time. Um, oh, it's uh, some sort of evil wizard. Some sort of AD&D reject. That, of course, throws fireballs, because what else? And hey, you found my face, dude. Thanks. <laughs> uh... Let's go to Fell Cold or Feel Cold. There's so many stages though. That that is nice, I guess. Oh man, this is a foggy place with more of this mesmerizing and headache-inducing uh, floor and, and uh, roof patterns. <laughs> they, they really give me a headache. At least the colors here aren't that hot. Really? Am I really touching anything inappropriately there? Doesn't seem so to me. But hey. And it seems like the actual hit detection of my projectiles are slightly off. In Space Area 1 I would kind of hit stuff a little more, e more easily. Here it seems a bit random and oh these things are back. These horrific palm trees that just keep wonking back and forth and up and down in all kinds of weird ways. Hate these things. Flipping impossible to dodge. Oh god, they're all over the place. And the clams are back. Now in flying form here. Ah, oh, that's great. Re what? I was pretty sure I shot that thing. Right in its ugly mouth. Yeah. Alright, let's carry on a little bit and see what we can find. Probably not too much else. I think we've seen what's going on here by now. And I would most likely have been a little bit more impressed by this back in the day. But these days it feels a little bit... Yeah. Sorry for being very negative here, but... <laughs> but it's a bit repetitive. I think I've, I'm repeating myself just to... You know, make, the, make a point here. Boss time? I believe so. Oh, I get to fight a ginormous jellyfish. That is good time. Oh, and he's actually firing something else. Not firing fireballs in my face. Although he does that too. Of course, yes, he does kind of do that too. But let's keep fighting for a little bit longer. And see if we c Yeah, that was a swift death. Yeah, game over. I just want to quickly check out Hell Peak because that sounds like a nice place, right? I just want to briefly see what's going on here. Yeah, this looks like a nice and warm place. And of course, it's all about dodging these flipping pillars while avoiding these guys, which we've already fought, I believe, at least once. 
Ah, uh, no, no, don't like this place. But honestly, it might not be as hard as the name would suggest. Or maybe it is. I'm not sure what I hit there, but... Mm. Get ready. But let's just waste our lives. Shouldn't take too long, right? Yeah, there's a lot of reused enemies. I'm not sure if this uh, is the same in the Mega Drive version because I haven't really played that one much. Get ready. Oh god, yeah, things are starting to heat up a little bit here. Oh yeah, that's the end of me. Have we got one more life? Get ready. Oh, I do. All right. Oh, these guys look very familiar as well. Something similar was in uh, Space Area 1 as well, I believe. Oh, when they close up, you can't destroy them. But when they open up, this you can get to the soft and tasty inside. More pillars. More wonky pillars and, yeah, more death to the face. Well, you know what, guys? I think I'm done. Definitely a technically impressive game. Fun to play? Eh, not really. Maybe I would have enjoyed this more back in the day, as I think I've said. But let's have a look at what some other people thought back in the day of this one. The reviews for Space Harrier were quite varied, ranging from about 50% up to 85, and everything in between. SD Format gave it an overall rating of 51% and Math Evans wrote, When a sequel is released, it's a good idea to make enough changes to the original format to warrant buying the title again. Unfortunately, Space Harrier 2 has almost exactly the same gameplay and appearance as its predecessor. Dedicated fans of the coin-up are the only ones who stand to gain anything from Space Harrier 2, because the updated version only offers a new set of levels instead of standing up as a game in its own right, a fact which won't attract much interest from the casual Shidema player and which will almost certainly condemn the game to the obscurity it so richly deserves. I have to agree, there's nothing really new here. They have, of course, made the game look nicer and it's technically more impressive, but it's very repetitive and very much like Space Harrier 1. And also, sadly, the hit detection seems a little bit wonky. Maybe it's just me, I don't know. Ace was a little bit more impressed and they gave it an overall of 819 mystery points and they write, Amazingly, the SD version runs just a little slower than its Mega Drive parent, without the loss of any of the console's superb graphics. In fact, the Sega's graphics data was sucked straight out of the ROM and into the SD source code. Audio is no great shakes, but then neither was the Mega Drive's. So definitely a mixed bag this. I would probably have played this a bit back in the day just because it's visually impressive. But I would probably have given up around stage three because things were getting pretty annoying there. <laughs> so guys, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this quick peek at Space Harrier 2 and hope to catch you in the next video. Cheers.